All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight to the SMUSA presidential debate. It's, I'm glad to see the number of people that have tuned in here live, and I'm sure many of you will watch later on once it's posted and uploaded. Before we uh, get started with the pres presidential debate, we have a fantastic guest speaker with us today. And it's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Zach Churchill. Zach is the MLA for Yarmouth and has been the MLA for Yarmouth since 2009. Zach, before that, Zach was the president of SMUSA and has made, laid major frameworks to SMUSA's organization. Um, he's made a lot of incredible, incredible impacts, talking about you know, the Opportunities Fund, which Zach was a major player in starting and something that's still going today. Um, as an elected official, Zach served as Minister of Education, Minister of Health, and I believe there's a few other ministries in there. I'm sure Zach will, sure Zach will touch on that. And uh, at SMUSA, we're incredibly grateful for Zach's continued uh, contributions as he's moved on. Um, Zach's, you know, he's uh, been very involved in Nova Scotia politics, and you may even see his name. Uh, you may even see his name come up in the future with the uh, Liberal Party. So with an honor to do, I would like to uh, give the floor to Zach. Alex, thank you so much. That was a, a very kind and, and, and gracious and much too generous uh, introduction. Uh, folks, I'm really, uh, really flattered to be invited to, to speak tonight. My career be actually began uh, at SMUSA and the memories I have up on the fifth floor there and in the Goresbrook uh, and in residence and, and on that campus uh, are so meaningful to me and were actually uh, my experience there was so important for the career trajectory that uh, that I went on so I'm so excited to see that um the organization is still strong it's still going we've got in, we've had incredible young uh, student leaders that have come out of this organization. And uh, that trend is, is obviously uh, continuing with the current group. Um, Isabel and El Giro, uh, listen, congratulations and kudos to you both for putting your name forward for, for president. Uh, it's a big decision to do that, to put your name on a ballot and subject yourself to uh, the, the opinions of, of your school community. Um, and you know, I think what you'll take from this experience is, uh, is really important. It's going to help you be more resilient. It's going to help you be better at connecting with people, uh, understanding people, selling yourself, selling ideas. And the experience, I, I think, is going to be one that you'll keep, uh, you know, probably for the, for the rest of your lives. Uh, my time at St. Mary's was just so uh, incredible. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a career uh, politician. I make no qualms about that. Uh, that career began at St. Mary's, um, and the reason I, I've stuck in this line of work is because I saw this is how you can get really important things done uh, to help people, to help your community, to support your, your country and province, and uh, that's just not with, you know, elected office, provincially or federally, uh, you know, that, that starts with, with student leadership. Uh, we were part of a really organized uh, and, and involved group in politics, the, 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 the group I was in, in SMUSA with and a member of CASA with as well. I, I, I did have the, uh, the great pleasure of being national director of CASA uh, for two years after I was president at, uh, at SMUSA. And um, so many of the folks that I, I met uh, through CASA uh, are involved in politics today. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. We, we show up to uh, when I was minister uh, you'd show up to Council of the Federation uh, meetings of, of, of ministers in various departments. And I was there with Stephen Lecce, who was Minister of Education, same time I was. He was from Western. Brian Gallant was Premier of New Brunswick. He was from our uh, our era in, in student leadership. He was Premier, uh, uh, served one term Premier, uh, one term pre as a Premier in New Brunswick. Uh, Sean Frazier, who's a current uh, MP in Nova Scotia and our, our Minister of, uh, of Immigration, handling a major file right now with uh, the Afghan uh, refugee program. Uh, really big, massive 
uh, incredible file that he's he's got. A, he's doing a great job with. Uh, all of these folks, their their careers began in in student politics, um, and it's not just. You, you may hear my you may hear one of my children in the in the in the background there. Uh, um, I'm much more proud of them than my my career actually. Um, but it's not just politics either. Like this opportunity that you folks have being involved with SMUSA, whether it's running for president, being a part of the board, uh, working for the organization is, is, is going to help prepare you to be successful when you, when you leave that institution. Um, the networks that you're going to make, the skill sets that you will develop uh, working for this organization um, might even be uh, more important and more useful to you than, than the degrees themselves. Dr. Dodds was the president uh, when I was there. He's still teaching uh, at the school, I believe. He's still in the faculty of business. He said uh, something to me that I never forgot. Uh, uh, and he was, uh, the, the administration at St. Mary's has always been very good uh, to deal with as well, based on my experience. I'm sure that's the same today. Very supportive of, of, of students and our, our success. And Dr. Dodds told me, you know, it's uh, who you know really does matter. Uh, the network you develop really does matter for job opportunities in the future, whether they're in business or politics or um, in, in the service sector, anywhere. Uh, those networks are really going to matter. So take the time while you're in this organization to hone your skills, uh, foster your networks, build those important relationships in that university community. Because I can tell you from experience going outside of that and when you leave the, the institution, uh, you'll take all that stuff with you. And it's so incredibly valuable uh, and important. And uh, with that, I just want to be pretty brief uh, with a few opening comments. I'd be happy, Alex, to take some questions if people uh, have any that they, they'd like to ask me. Thank you so much for your time. And again, thank you so much for the, the invitation to be here. It's, it's, it gives me great pride uh, to be back and, and, and to be included in this. Awesome, Zach. We we really appreciate you coming out. If anybody does have any uh, questions, questions for Zach, uh, you can put them in the chat there. Um, while we uh, while we uh, while we wait, if there's any questions, I would like to uh, to mention to that um, when we invite uh, guest speakers. So we had a guest speaker for those who were at the board. We had a guest speaker. We, we like to offer them a token of our appreciation. And usually this comes as, as in a donation, um, donation in the person's name. So we're very, very, um, very grateful. Zach chose the uh, SMUSA Opportunities Bursary um, to be where we would put send that donation, something that Zach, you know, as you know, we mentioned, helped started. Um, you know, it's an opportunity that provides students a chance to, you know, ease the affordability of education. And it's something that's very important, something that, you know, all of us at SMUSA are proud of, and we're very grateful that that framework was out, uh, laid out. Um, and it's something that, you know, we look to continue moving forward. So um, thanks for that. Um, seeing no questions, what I'd like to do is introduce the Chief Returning Officer, Herman. And Harman will take us away. And thanks again to Zach for coming up. Listen, thank, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to say hello. I'm so happy that that opportunity bursary is still going. That was a really, uh, really fun project to work on. And uh, was a big part of, of the network that, that, our, that our group of student leaders developed at the time uh, that, that I'm still connected to today. So, so keep up the good work. I'm going to get back to my family. But this was a, a very, uh, a very sincere pleasure to be here. And Alex, thank you so much for inviting me. Good luck, uh, Isabel and and Al Giro. Uh, um, I know you guys are going to run really positive campaigns on ideas, and uh, and and uh, be good to one another. We'll talk to you soon. All right.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming out and joining us tonight. I would like to introduce Paula, um, who's been our moderator for almost 15 years. She brings a wealth of governance, technology, and leadership. Her passion and advocacy in the tech and governance fields has benefited a wide range of organizations in both Canada and internationally. She currently sits on the board of two private companies, a nonprofit and of openmedia.org, the North American organization tasked with keeping the internet open and accessible to all North Americans. So in addition to her professional expertise experience, Paula is a weekly columnist with AllAtlanticCanada.com, the leading business publication in Canada, um, Atlantic Canada. Paula has provided her expertise on governance through national television, appearances and in several print media and radio interviews so in her spare time paula is an active member of the sailing skiing basketball and arts communities in her hometown of halifax nova scotia so i would like to pass it down to uh, paula hi welcome everyone um I, for those of you who are here on Tuesday, it's going to be very similar, except with only two people. So the questions will be, um, it'll be easier. Before we get going, I do want to give um, both Aljaro and Isabel a chance to um, introduce themselves. Excuse me. So um, Aljaro, we're going to go with you. Oh, fantastic. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Alfred Knowles. I'm a third year student pursuing a degree in the commerce program with a major in marketing. Uh, three major things about me. One, I'm from the Bahamas. Two, I'm energetic. And three, I just love meeting new people. Uh, to me, being your president means bridging the gaps between students at SMU and success is both inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, I believe I can pl play an integral role into bringing the vision closer to reality, since Musa plays a integral role in experience students have at university. Uh, I plan to do this through promoting mental health for students, advocating for flexible learning models, and encouraging more involvement and participation both on campus and off campus. Uh, if selected, I intend to put my all into this position uh, working alongside a team of like-minded individuals who want to see a change for a better music for all students. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Isabel. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Paula, Ojero, and everyone else for joining us. My name is Isabel Tyler, and I'm a fourth year student here at St. Mary's University studying criminology, social justice, and English. I currently serve as the Vice President of Student Affairs for SMUSA, and in my past, I've served as a Residence Assistant, a Residence Programming Assistant, and Chair of the Residence Events Committee. My experience in coordinating student events and advocating for change within my previous roles, I believe has best prepared me for my role as your next SMUSA President. I know that throughout the debate, there will be plenty of opportunities to chat about the challenges and issues facing SMUSA as an organization, and tonight I plan on to prove to you why I'm the best person to solve these challenges and I want to prove that my plan is the best way forward. Together, we can build a SMUSA that works for you, and I hope I can count on your vote on February 16th and 17th. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. So now that we've met everyone, um, the next part is I'm going to ask six questions that the candidates have been given ahead of time, but you, the audience, have work. <laughs> In addition to that, uh, I'd like it very much if you would post, uh, if you would email questions that you have to um, the CRO and DRO. Uh, so it's the elections emails, elections at smusa.ca, I believe. Someone can confirm that for me. Uh, and then they will be compiling them and sending them to me. So, sorry, it's elections.smusa at smu.ca. Um, thank you. So then they will compile them, give them to me, and we'll have, once we're through the pre done questions, um, we'll have a chance to answer your question. So really appreciate that. Okay, so Aldro, you went first. So Isabel, you'll be first this time. We're going to alternate each time. And uh, the first question is, if elected, what's the first issue on which you would take action and why? So advocating for a permanent hybrid learning model is one of my first issues I would take action on. This is a very important issue that has been impacting many SMU students. 
As president, I will continue working with the university to advocate for more hybrid learning options so courses can be offered in both online and in person. During the campaign, students have brought up concerns surrounding mental health issues, vulnerable and immune compromised communities, students with children, and international travel restrictions. To the students watching tonight, I hear you and I understand the importance of getting something done. A permanent hybrid learning model is key to a more accessible educational future, and I believe SMU students deserve a more accessible education. My opponent has come out with a similar policy stance, and I'm so proud that more candidates are standing up for these issues. The difference between our campaigns is mine involves a real advocacy plan to get this done, and I have the necessary experience to work with the university on this. Together, we can make this happen. Thank you. Thanks, Isabel. Aldro, over to you. Uh, so for me, the first issue I would take action on is providing more mental health outreach for students. Uh, over the past three years, the pandemic has played an integral role in increasing mental health over students. For me, I can speak for myself. Uh, I believe it's important to let students know that we care and we will provide every resource as a student association to ensure that we take every necessary step and measure to combat mental health and physical well-being while embarking on the university experience. So for me, I know that being a residence assistant, we have different resources like residence wellness, and we also have the counseling center. So I think it would be great if there would be a collaboration between both SMUSA, residence wellness, as well as the counseling center so we can combat this thing for students and help us be the best university we can be. Thank you. So the next question, obviously reverse order. What do you think are the most important challenges that SMUSA, face, that SMUSA faces? So this goes to me. Okay. Um, so in my tenure here at uh, St. Mary's, I realized that there are a lot of challenges at SMUSA or within SMUSA. So some of the challenges that I believe is important um, or I think SMUSA faces is, first of all, student involvement. Student involvement is crucial to the university experience. And I believe that if we provide more resources and outreach and also like extending more events and having things to get students involved, they'd be able to embark fully on the university experience. Another thing too, I think we should also um, pay attention to is providing necessary funding to societies. A lot of societies don't have the necessary fundings to carry out events that they can get residents involved with and also students off campus as well. So I think that with SMUSA, because we're such a really great corporation, that it's something that we should pay attention to to get that involvement into place. And another thing too that we should pay attention to is being reachable when someone needs an answer. I noticed that some of my friends, when they do reach out to SMUSA, they don't get an answer on time. And in my opinion, the answer isn't the best quality answer. So I think that having people in place around the clock that will be able to answer students' questions and concerns is also essential. And finally, another thing too, that a problem I think SMUSA also faces is gender equality, specifically representation in high roles, such as the board of directors or even presidency. So I think it's, important that we provide more, I guess, outreach to students and women in particular, so we could let them know that it's okay, that we want you and we accept you. And I just believe that it's important to let, in particular, women know that they should be empowered and that it's okay to just apply for these roles and just be an integral part of society, especially our SMU society in general. So those are the challenges uh, SMU faces. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I should let you guys know that if you see me looking down, I'm timing each answer at two minutes, I cut them off. So it's not that I'm not paying attention, it's that I'm timing you and I just have to keep making sure that I'm paying attention to it. Okay. All right, Isabel, your turn, same question. I think the first step to solving any problem is recognizing that there is one. As the Vice President of Student Affairs, I worked hard to address some of these issues, but I recognize there are plenty more to address. Firstly, societies need our attention. I've been working hard with all societies to rebuild their organizational structures since day one. My plan will address the needs of societies by providing more funding and getting them back to their pre-COVID normality. SMUSA also has some governance challenges. Our, our policies are sometimes vague, undetailed, and outdated. 
While working with the SPECE Board of Directors and addressing these issues, I think we should all look closely and re-examine our policy approach. We could also do a much better job at collecting data and using the data we collect to advocate to the university. Collecting more data on what students want will help us in our advocacy efforts and student engagement. In summary, we need to get our societies back to pre-COVID normal, work with the board on reforming some of our SMUSA policies, and work to collect more data so SMUSA can be a more effective advocate. Great, thank you. All right, so now you're up, Isabel. And the question is, what motivated you to run for president? And that's for both of you. So go ahead, Isabel. Perfect. Great question. So firstly, I love SMU. Since I first arrived at SMU, I felt like I was part of a greater community because of the welcoming and kind nature of SMU is what inspired me to get more involved. So as I mentioned in my first year, I was the chair of the Residence Events Committee, which was something that wasn't usually typical for a first year student to get involved with right away. Um, and that pushed me into working as a programming assistant for residents, and I was programming events throughout the whole residence community. And in my second year, I returned to residence as a residence assistant and a programming assistant, continuing the work that I started in my first year. From 2021 to now, I've been serving as the VP of Student Affairs for SMUSA, as I mentioned, and it has truly been the experience of a lifetime. My job has allowed me to connect with hundreds of students around campus, while also listening to their concerns and working on their behalf. The love for my job as VP Student Affairs is what motivated me to run for your SMUSA president. As a student who has experienced living on campus, off campus, feeling alone and struggling to find my place in this university, I know I have the right experience to work towards building a SMUSA that truly represents students' concerns. Uh, for me, uh, what voted me to run for president? So I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't really think I would fit the role, if I'd be honest. I do consider myself a leader, but being a residence assistant at SMU, it allowed me to just embark on such a great experience, meeting so much people from different walks of life and just meeting people in general. And that's just something that I'm passionate about. And to be honest with you, my floor mates who I do manage did kind of force me and they did tell me that we believe in you and we think that you should be the best fit for the role. So. I just took it upon myself to just apply, although it was last minute, I took it upon myself and I just thought that it was something that I should just invest my time into considering that I just want to bring students together between not just SMU, but without the greater, within the greater community. And also my parents are just like, they're great nuggets in my life. And I love and appreciate everybody that just has such an empowerment and just something that just allows people to just be the best version of themselves. So for me, it was my floor mates and my family, my close friends. Thank you. So you get to start again. Oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I need to say that to be, many say that to be a good um, leader, you have to be a good listener. Are you a good yeah. listener? And can you explain, elaborate on that a little? Okay, so for me, I do consider myself to be a good listener. Um, growing up, my parents always taught me the importance of being empathetic and being able to understand and learn things from people. And in order to be a great listener, you have to be a great leader. So I think those two go hand in hand. But being a great listener doesn't just mean listening to people's problems. Being a listener means that you can learn a thing or two from people. Being a great listener means that it's okay to get feedback and criticism and things that are just going to help you along in life. Because those things that you do remember from when you're listening, it just, they, they're going to come back at you in life. So in my opinion, I just love when I'm able to talk with people and give them my life story. And just whenever they're able to just share things with me that I can just carry throughout a lifetime. And I just love the idea of being a big brother and being a big brother means that you have to be a great listener. So I'm just here for this new community. And I'm here to listen and provide feedback and get feedback and criticism just to make our community a better community. Okay, Isabel, I'm gonna remind you guys I'm being kind because there's only two of you, but we, we should be trying to stick to that uh, two minute answers, okay? Thanks, Paula. I think that many people in my life would say I'm a good listener. I have been engaging with students for almost four years now, and I've had many fantastic conversations about our university and what needs to be improved upon. I spent the first part of this campaign listening. 
listening to students, faculty, and other members of the SMU community to gather a feeling of what is important. My platform is built on listening and engaging with others. As your SMUSA president, I will never stop listening to your concerns. As a residence assistant, my job was listening to my floor members and students and residents to hear their needs and make sure they felt comfortable in the place they slept, eat, and learn. This job required a lot of empathy and leadership skills as you work with many students from many places who are at many stages of their life. Now working with student societies, I spent a lot of time listening to their needs and what they felt had to change. I updated the SMUSA website for the first time in years to include an updated society list, which yes, is still a work in progress and simplified various society forms. I also committed to one-on-one -on -one meetings every semester with each society executive from over 40 societies. I believe that listening is the key to leading. So on that note, if there is something important to you that has not been mentioned in my platform, please reach out anytime so we can chat. Excellent, you guys are doing well on these. Um, so obviously <laughs> we're doing an online uh, debate, which is, um, it's not quite the same as an in-person thing. And I'm sure that's the same for all your other classes. So that's the next question is how would you increase student involvement given the online environment? Um, starting with you, Isabel. Thank you. So as we've seen over the last year, everything's kind of been switching back and forth, virtual in person, back to virtual, and hopefully back to in person again. So increasing student involvement in an online environment has been something I've worked on extensively over the last year. When I was planning fall welcome weeks, everything was always up in the air and I had to have a plan A, B, C, D, the whole alphabet in case everything suddenly switched to online. Welcome Weeks ended up being extremely successful and in collaboration with Student Affairs and Services, we hosted events that were in person and online, going back to that hybrid model. So many new and returning students were part of these Welcome Weeks events and the engagement was really good. The Winter Welcome Weeks that took place in January was a completely virtual event, um, which meant that I organized events that ranged from virtual bingo to virtual speech and meet and greet all which thankfully received great student engagement despite the online circumstances. We have a large virtual outreach with students and by collecting more data, we will find out what students want. We'll be able to provide the events, workshops and assistance that students are looking for overall improving student involvement given the online environment. Thank you, Aldero. Uh, so for me, how I think we could increase student involvement uh, given the online environment. So I think that we should definitely increase social media, social media usage by maintaining an active daily presence on multiple platforms because students have not just Instagram, they have Snapchat, they have Facebook, they have LinkedIn. It's different ways that you could keep up. Another way that I think we could keep up is being clear about how and when to get in touch. So just providing students with the accessibility that they're able to reach at specific times and when they can. Um, we should also celebrate greatness and accomplishments. With this, we can encourage students to strive for opportunities that will almost guarantee a positive outcome. And finally, for me, I think we should be accessible and ready for students that have questions and concern and provide the best possible answers. So for me, that's the definition of being tech savvy. Thank you. Okay, so last question. Um, and I specifically changed the wording on this. Um, so I, I realize that that might be somewhat controversial, but um, how, would, how do you plan to address the overrepresentation of males and underrepresentation of females in elective and executive roles within SMUSA? Aldro, you're up first. So for me, I plan to create a diverse atmosphere. Although there are more men running for music roles um, and positions, I plan to let students know that we are all for gender equality. Um, I think that providing women empowerment workshops, not only within SMUSA, but on campus would allow for women to understand that they too play a vital role and an integral role in the workplace and on campus as well. Um, I consider myself to be a feminist. And for me, I want to see women win. And if elected, I plan to do my best abilities to pass a policy that will allow for more equality within the workplace and within SMU and SMUSA. Thank you. Hey, Isabel, over to you. Thank you. So as the only current female on the SMUSA executive, I've experienced these issues firsthand. So 
This means that I plan on working towards gender equality within the executive team that I hire, ensuring that there is an equal representation. If elected, to my knowledge, I will be the second female president in SMUSA history. For the first time, as far as I can tell, we have more females running for the board than males. As your next SMUSA president, I will ensure that more workshops are available for students when considering for SMUSA positions and running for those politics and other positions within our organization. I also think having a summit based around female empowerment and leadership can help us engage more young women who are interested in getting involved with SMUSA. While I've been involved with societies, I've met so many strong female leaders like Rosa and Maya at UNICEF, Beth and the whole team at CAPIS, Chelsea and Morgan at the Commerce Society, and so many more strong female leaders that there are too many to name. <laughs> it would also empower more women to get involved, but grow the society involvement here on campus. By creating meaningful relationships, we can address the overrepresentation of males and make SMUSA truly work for the women that it serves. All right, so those were the ones that we had ahead of time. Um, the uh, the questions that, oh, the timer just went, you had a few seconds left. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the questions that we've had come in so far, I'm gonna just uh, ask them in no particular order. But the first one, and it starts with you, Isabel, because you just finished, is how will you support other leaders on campus? Thank you, Paula. So supporting other student leaders on campus is very important. Um, I would work on networking among university departments, as well as establishing an open communication among leaders to better represent students at SMU. As a person who has held many leadership positions in various departments, I understand the need for better communication and support among student leaders. And as president, I would create a safe and healthy environment. Thank you. Great. Aldro? So for me, what I would do with student leadership on campus, obviously there would be need for collaboration. I think that it's great that SMUSA has established itself as a student association. So for me, just like collaborating with different uh, departments where leadership roles are an integral part into different societies or different organizations, with this, we can come together and make either events or even workshops where we could encourage students to just come out and probably be the best leader that they thought they couldn't be. So for me, just collaborating and creating workshops and leadership events that will encourage students to just take that extra nudge to be the best person that they could be essentially. Thank you. Great. Um, so the next question uh, is about uh, our Indigenous uh, history and, and our current Indigenous relations. How do you plan to foster truth and reconciliation on campus for Indigenous students at SMU? And, and I know that that's how the person wrote the question, um, but I'm going to edit it a little bit because I do believe we are all treaty people. So when we say we're going to foster truth and reconciliation on campus, that's for everyone. Um, and so that I'm just editing that person's question so they understand. Uh, and I'm going to start with you, Aldro, since you just finished. Okay, so for me, I've learned so much about the Indigenous history uh, within uh, SMU. So I believe that obviously we should have more outreach for Indigenous people, in my opinion. And also for a SMU community, we should educate them about what it means to be an Indigenous person and what that entails. And truth and reconciliation is just something that just extends for so far. And I just think that we should pay attention to that. So just educating students, not just Indigenous students, but SMU students as well, and even letting Indigenous students share their stories about what it means to them so that students feel educated about this particular topic, so that this can extend for more than just a lifetime. Thank you, Isabel, over to you. Thank you. Um, so currently I am working on bringing back the Indigenous society. I have many student leaders who are really engaged working on this. And I think that's just the beginning. Um, I think that hosting more events in collaboration with the university and collaborating with outside Indigenous organizations, is really important to bring that to our campus and really give that education to students. Speaking of education, I think it is also very important to advocate 
for the hiring of more Indigenous professors on our campus. A lot of our courses are being taught by professors that may not be Indigenous and may not know this information that needs to be known. So I think those are some of the first steps I would take to bring truth and reconciliation to our campus. Thank you. Great. Again, I'm not doing these necessarily in the order that came in, and I don't see uh, who wrote, writes what questions, so you'll have to bear with me for a second. But there's a related question, so I'm going to ask it, and it's very specifically, what supports do you think SMUSA can offer to Indigenous students that it doesn't already? And I'll uh, start with you, Isabel. Thank you. Uh, I think some of the supports that SMUSA can offer Indigenous students are community. So creating this Indigenous Student Society is one of the first steps that we can take. Building a community for Indigenous students to feel safe and talk and be part of something big. Um, I think some other supports that SMUSA may be able to advocate for is some funding for our Indigenous students and really creating a space where they feel safe, um, talking about their culture and bringing that truth and reconciliation back. Thank you. Uh, so for me, uh, I believe that obviously what Isabella said, I agree with her 100%. I do believe that it's important that we have an Indigenous society so that students feel comfortable and they feel welcomed. And obviously they can just express their stories and what being Indigenous means to them so that we can actually, I'm gonna jump back to what I said, educate not just students, but also Indigenous students to Indigenous students about what that particular aspect means to them in their lives. So I just think the formation of societies and just outreach for Indigenous students is just something that we should pay attention to and that's something that we should probably implement within the next couple of months or so. But I just think it's just something important that we need to pay attention to. Thank you. Great, thank you both. So the next question came in and it's uh, very, very long. So I'm gonna break it up. <laughs> and the first one is, can you tell us a little bit about your knowledge uh, of SMUSA, how you think it works and the, the overall association? So that's gonna be uh, the first and then I will ask you the other ones. I'm breaking it up a little bit. So we start with you again, Aljaro. Uh, so for me, I've been to SMU for probably a year and a half now. SMUSA to me is an association. It's students working for students where we just try to provide the best experience possible for our university students. SMUSA, in my opinion, is an organization that tries and strives to bridge the gap between students and involvement and interactions. And SMUSA is just something where we could just come and connect. And it's just it's students working for students, but students who also want to see a change within our students society within university. So that's what SMUSA means to me. And the roles of SMUSA is just obviously, you know, just presidents and board of directors just making decisions and passing policies that will be an aid for the students of St. Mary's University. Isabel? Perfect. So to me, SMUSA is, as Algero said, students working for students. Um, we are a student-run organization, um, and we have a lot of different kind of things in our university. Um, so we not only have our executive team, which ranges from student um, affairs and services, and then also advocacy, academic, all of those things supporting our students. But we also have other things with me. So we have our Gorsbrook Lounge, we have our Husky Patrol, our information desk, all of those different people and steps that really build SMUSA as an organization. The role of the president um, is to oversee the association's day-to-day -day operations and the responsibility to advance the organization's best interests. And that's what SMUSA does. We listen to our students, um, we host events for our students, uh, we provide academic support, we provide advocacy, and we really work for the students and uh, get them involved. Great, I've got another question here that I think I've had most years, <laughs> which is what are you going to do uh, to better integrate students and residents and students who are off campus and students who are local with students who are international? And uh, that starts with you, Isabel. Thank you. So I think this ties directly in with student engagement. So um, as someone who has lived on residence and has lived on campus, I understand 
the challenges and the barriers between both positions. Um, when you're living on residence, it's easy because everything is here in the same vicinity. When you're off campus, it's a little harder because you may have to bus in or drive in 10 minutes, 40 minutes, two hours, who knows? So it's a little harder to get involved when you have to do all of this traveling. Um, a way to better integrate res students and off-campus students is host more events. Um, hosting events at various times of the days has been something that I've done over the year. Um, so we've had have work, bleh, sorry, <laughs> we have had workshops that have run at three o'clock in the afternoon to better um, have our other off-campus students attend. Um, and we've had later um, events for all students. Um, one of the things that SMISA has is our Husky Patrol, which helps our off-campus students come back and forth from events. Um, we drive students to and from campus if needed. Um, and I really believe that helps bridge that gap. Thank you. Uh, for me, being an international student and also living on res, I've seen what it's like for students off campus trying to come to campus to just, I guess, be a part of this new community. And in my opinion, I'm gonna agree with Isabella again on this one. I think we need to host more events, but events that are targeted to both residents and off-campus students, as well as international students and local students. So I think providing events that kind of that are kind of incentive incentivized, if that makes sense. Uh, I guess we could host like different stuff like game workshops, and then obviously a person wins the prize. And I think Smusa right now is doing a great job with that. I think in particular this year was a really great year for me and a lot of international students because of the way that they've just tried to join us together. And I just think continuing with that same thing, but obviously pushing it out a bit more and trying to reach more students would be the way that we could integrate that entire society together in our SMU community. Great, I just realized I hadn't, I hadn't muted that time. That's how I got stuck behind. Um, SMUSA is a business with, uh, it's a $7 million a year business. That's a sizable business. And effectively the president operates as the CEO. What, what are the skill sets you think are important and which ones do you possess that make you capable of um, running a $7 million a year business? Okay, so for me, running a $7 million, that's a lot of money, obviously. Um, you have to be a great coordinator. You have to know how to delegate tasks and make sure that people get those tasks done on time and to the best of their abilities. You have to be involved. Being involved means that you need to host workshops with your people or your employees that you're working with so that they know how to do things and they know how to do it to the best of their abilities and they know how to interact with their colleagues and workmates and employees and all in between. Being a risk taker is important. Being able to take the risk or investing into things that are going to benefit the SMU community is an important thing because that means that you're just gonna take the risk and see how best you do. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does work, you know what you can do to move forward. Even if it doesn't work, you know how to move forward. Being that you take the risk and that risk will help later on in the future so you don't make those mistakes. And also being a good listener is important too, as we discussed, and I think I already explained what it means to be a great listener. So those are the four important things that, or qualities that any president should possess if they're coming into the position. Go ahead, Isabel. Thank you. All right, so becoming the SUSE president would definitely need a lot of good skills um, that I believe I have, if not had before, learned over the last year as the vice president. Um, I think it's important to be organized, as Elgera said, and also listen, as we talked about before, um, to students, other departments of the university, um, and also hire a team with experience that you can trust. Um, it's all about your team, surrounding yourself with people who have the experience, who you trust, who you know will do good work, um, and also having great networking skills. Um, as president, you have a lot of meetings. <laughs> um, I do know that. And um, you have to meet with a lot of people on a daily basis to talk about various challenges, um, not only challenges, sometimes you talk about really good things, um, with various people around the university. Um, so I think all of those skills combined really gives a good president, a good presidential floor to stand on. And I believe that I do have those skills. Thank you. 
Okay, again with the, uh, I'm parsing these. So if you don't recognize your question, um, you can send another email, but I'm trying to just sort of read them and, and turn them into questions because some of them are very long. Um, so can you give us an example where you personally had to manage a conflict or a difficult situation? Okay, so um, a situation where I've had to handle conflict um, personally um, or a difficult situation, I would say a difficult situation I had was actually coming into this role. Um, my transition was a little rocky at the beginning. Um, we just came out of a whole virtual COVID filled year and I was kind of building up things from the floor. So societies, there were no kind of records of what society actually existed at the time. So over the year I spent um, building up these societies, um, figuring out who they were and who existed and what they wanted to do and supported them through all of these times. Um, I think that was a really big challenge that I had to overcome. I was new to the role. Um, our whole team was pretty new, so we were trying to figure out what was going on at the same time. And not having that transition was a big challenge that, as president, I would make sure never happened again. Um, I don't want anyone to experience that themselves. Um, so yeah, that will be my answer. Thank you. I'll draw over to you. Uh, so for me, a conflict that I had to handle was basically where people didn't know how to complete a specific task. Uh, it was a time back in like a few years ago. So I worked in retail over the past few years and people didn't know certain items about a product, didn't know how to sell this or didn't know even a simple thing as the price of the product. So for me, I think that being president means that you have to make sure that your employees and the students that are working for you are knowledgeable about the product and their brand within themselves. And Smuza is such a very big brand in itself within the Halifax community and Atlantic Canada. So I believe that making sure that people know what they're saying and making sure that people know the information that is required to sell themselves or even sell the particular brand to the, the SMU community or our SMUdents. Okay, as someone who's been here through some interesting times, I'm asking a question on my on my own, <laughs> and um, and that is, do you promise? Uh, it's a yes or no question. Do you promise to always conduct yourself so that such that no matter what happens and what you do, it will reflect well on Smusa? For me, I promise to be the best role model I can be. Being a role model to me is just something that's important, being that person that people are able to look up to and say that that's the guy that I know, I'm able to count on that guy. So I, Aldro Knowles, here, I'm saying this today on the 10th of February, 2022, that I certify to be the best role model and to be the best president Smooza has ever seen if elected. So thank you. And for me, yes, I promise as well. Great. I had to ask that because sometimes you guys drive me nuts. You do crazy things and you call for me to clean up the mess and I don't like it so much. So I'm allowed to ask that question. Okay. So speaking of cleaning up and messes, um, we're going to go to uh, the environment and sustainability. So what do you think or what would you do to help improve both the sustainability and the environmental footprint um, at uh, SMUSA and what do you think the biggest issues are and what actions would you take to help uh, mediate them? Okay, I believe so. So um, for me, environmental um, and sustainability issues are, they're a big thing and um, Right now, they're a massive thing in the world to anybody that you talk to. Um, right now, working virtually, we have kind of gotten rid of paper in a way. Um, I've noticed in most of my classes, profs have stopped giving out little paper handouts and printing off thousands of pages of a syllabus that you're never going to read again after that first intro class, if you go. So I think that is, it is important to keep up with these new changes um, and use the virtual hybrid model to our advantage. Um, we also have a lot of great resources on campus already, like the Environmental Society, who have amazing leaders um, who know 
a lot about what they are passionate about. And I think connecting with students like those executives and those members of that society is really important to get those ideas and figure out what you can do to change on our campus in an environmental and sustainable way. Thank you. Uh, so Isabella stole the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> so uh, yes, uh, environmental sustainability is a big problem within the world and within Halifax in itself. And for coming for me being an international student and coming from the Bahamas, we have tried to succeed in environmental sustainability, but it's only certain places where you can get that. So I believe that having this opportunity here to collaborate with a society within itself environmental um, society with music collaborating with them we can probably work on ways that we can make our environment the most cleanest and safest environment possible and probably even like just hosting events that will get students involved like how to reuse plastic or how to recycle this or even how to just decompose that i think that by doing those things in collaboration hosting events and seminars and all in between that students become more knowledgeable about how to protect their environment and how to protect this new community. Thank you. Okay, so um, the, the next question that came in is about what are you going to do? Uh, what's music gonna to do to make newcomers to residents feel welcomed and appreciated? And the impression that I get is this might be because where you've been pretty much virtual for two years, uh, you might have a, a bigger, influx next year and they might not all be first year students. Um, I don't know that, but that's kind of what I'm getting the sense of. So I'm going to ask you two to answer that. And then I'm going to just let everyone else know if I can. If you have any more questions, get them in soon, because otherwise um, we'll be wrapping up around top of the hour. OK. All right, so for me, I'm going to go back to the international student card. For me, it was kind of sad coming into St. Mary's University last year, January 2021, and not being able to participate in anything because the campus was closed. That was a sad show. Um, so I believe that promoting SMUSA and SMUSA promoting international students and local students, I'm going to pinpoint back to that part where we integrate both the students off campus, on campus local students and international students. If we continue with the way that we're going, like this year was a great year with the welcome weeks and stuff like that. If we're able to enhance that and somehow work our way around that in a COVID living world, I believe that continuing with the welcome weeks and going forth and just providing more innovative things to help elevate our SMU community um, is just something that I would continue with. So I'd probably want to enhance that welcome week thing and just be accessible and ready for when students have answers and questions and concerns about our societies and in between. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so for me, um, in my first year, uh, I didn't know when I came and I lived in residence, um, it was kind of a lonely time. Um, I thought I was super ready and ready to get involved and um, I ended up being a little lonely. Um, I went home almost every weekend um, and I really wasn't getting as involved as I should have been. Um, I did go to welcome weeks, um, but I think in the middle of my second day, I decided to go sit in my res room on my own. So I do understand the challenges that come to new students um, when they are coming to res. Um, it's really easy to just go sit in your room and barricade yourself from the world. And I feel that at SMUSA as an organization, it's our job to get these students feeling healthy and feeling like they can actually get involved with a lot of different things that we offer. Um, one of those things would be our Welcome Week events. Um, something that we have done this year um, over the summer, we did some pre-Welcome Week events in the summertime to get students ready and prepped for the big Welcome Weeks, which I think really, really helped. Um, and also getting these resident students connected to societies um, is something that I'm currently working on, um, and I think it's important to carry on over the next year. Um, societies are right here, um, resident students are right here, and creating that bridge between them I think is very important to get resident students involved on campus activities and really extend their network to other things that the university offers. Great. Well, I'm going to... Um say that, that we're getting very close to the top of the hour. 
So before, um, before we, we pull out of this, uh, what I want to ask is for each of you to just take a minute and say three things that you want people to remember about you. So I'll, I'll to give you a minute to think, I'll tell you how I do this. So for me, I hope that at the end of tonight, you remember that I'm knowledgeable, that I'm kind, and that I want to help you. Um, that's what I hope you take away from your time with me. So I'd like each of you to say what you'd like to take away um, or like us to take away uh, from this time together uh, as, as your three defining characteristics. And because you just finished Isabel, you're up. Perfect, thank you, Paula. So the three things that I hope you take away from this about me is that I'm experienced. Um, I'm here to listen to you, students. And I'm also really passionate about this job and what I do. Thank you. For me, I am a person that wants to elevate, innovate, and renovate our SPM community. Great. So I, I do want to say thank you. Um, you guys did a great job, particularly given the, uh, the challenge here. I do think it's awesome that you're running. Um, and I wish both of you the best of luck. And with that, I'm going to hand this back to um, Harmon. But before anybody hangs up, anybody here who is a board candidate or a president presidential candidate, we will ask you to uh, to stay on the call at the end. So I'm not sure if it's Harmon or Alex, but normally one of you guys has to be the one to end this. So thank you so much for having me. It was fun. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Awesome, I'll, uh, I'll just jump in and I'd like to thank everybody. Um, Thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's, a, uh, it's great to see a great turnout and I uh, hope you guys are, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it was great. It was all the candidates, both candidates did well. Our guest speaker was great. And a special thanks again to the entire, um, the entire elections team and a special thanks to Paula for taking the time out to do these debates. Um, I'll pass it over to Armand to, to wrap things up. Right. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. And uh, I would like Isabel and uh, Alhara to stay back. And if anyone has any questions, you can ask right now. If not, then I would just like to talk to you guys about uh, a few things. 